So this little fella is the Nebula Capsule 3 laser projector. It's a tiny projector that's so small it can slip into your pocket. Yet it's powerful enough to deliver 100 inch images like this or outdoors at 150 inches like this. Let's take a closer look and see exactly why you ought to be considering getting this if you truly want a portable projector that you can take anywhere with you. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So the Nebula comes in at a similar price range to the BenQ GS50 and so I'll show you some of the differences between the two later on in this video. So first of all, let's take a look at what you get inside your Nebula Capsule 3 laser. So the box is really small and compact. And as you would expect from Nebula and Anker who make this, it is extremely well packaged and everything is just really premium feeling. You also get a little accessory box which comes with your remote control, a quick start guide and also the batteries for the remote. And you also get a USB-C charging cable. This is everything that comes in the box and as you can see it's very compact, you can even take that everywhere. But this is the star of the show and it is a mighty fine looking device. On top you have your controls which do light up in the dark and I'll show you that a little bit later. But this thing is just really robust feeling, incredibly premium quality made and just looks the absolute business plus it only weighs 950 grams a simple on off button on the back and a mode switch and then you've got your three inputs at the bottom an HDMI port a type C USB charging port and also an auxiliary port which again is a nice touch now, although this is really tiny and it can go anywhere, it's really handy that you do have a tripod mount on the bottom. And that's how I'll be using this during the course of this video. You can get an idea of the size of this thing comparing it to my normal regular size iPhone. The built-in battery will last two and a half hours and here you can see it's on my tripod and we're now ready to turn this thing on. Speaking of turning it on, this fires up really quickly. It fired up in around five seconds, which again is nice if you're out and about and you just want to quickly get straight to that movie. Now when you do fire it up for the first time, you'll have to connect the remote control, which is simple to do, and then you'll just follow the on-screen instructions to set this thing up with your Google Play Store and also with your Google account. You don't have to, but you certainly get a lot more function with it. Now this is it projecting against my 100-inch screen in my office studio. As you can see, I've got quite a bright light in the left-hand side on, and it still delivers a really sharp and very vivid picture. Now, when you first boot this thing up, it will fire into your Android TV 11 software, but then it will auto focus and auto set Keystone, which again, for a device this small, is really, really clever. Do excuse the flicker, you don't see that in reality, that's just the camera frequency that I was set to at the time. Now you can see I've got even more lights on in this studio, and it's producing an incredibly bright image for this 1080p projector, which on paper is just 300 ANSI lumens, but I think Think you'll agree it is very watchable even when there's ambient lighting in the room. This again is another example again similar lighting and this is playing the trailer to Avatar and again it just looks fantastic. This time though I've got the window open and so you can see all of that light coming in on the right hand side. And if you wonder what it was like in a perfectly black room, well then this is later that same night and as you can see, the vividness of the image is unbelievable. It is really incredible and that laser light source is doing a fantastic job. By the way, all of the footage that you're looking at today is without the power plugged in, so I don't want to give it a boost of brightness just to try and mislead you. So this is exactly what it would be like running off the battery if you are using the projector. Now I'm going to show you how you can make it even brighter in just a few moments. One area where these type of projectors just do not do as well as some others is in the black level detail, but that is to be expected, but I still don't think it's that bad. Right, I froze frame this image because I want to show you what happens when you go even closer because not everyone will be projecting at 100 inches and in fact I probably recommend that something around the 65 to 75 inches which is around where it is now is probably more the ideal type so somewhere 65 to 85 inches is probably the sweet spot and I'll show you the difference in brightness in a second of the two different highest levels. Okay, so I'm just gonna overlay the 65 inch image with the 100 inch image and you can see the difference in brightness. So the closer you go, naturally the brighter the image will get. 
Now, if you are going to be using this outside, then I definitely recommend to waiting just to after sunset. As you can see, it's not completely dark, but other lights are on. But the brightness of that image on what is probably around 130 to 150 inch screen is looking absolutely incredible. It really is amazing what this does. The projector has a couple of very smart features, which is autofocus and also auto keystone correction. Now, to give you an idea of what that means, autofocus is um, what it says. It focuses it automatically, and auto keystone means that you can be off on the left or the right of middle, and it will still position the screen straight. So in reality, this is how it works. I've taken it right off to the right, and this is what the screen would look like without auto keystone correction, and then it adjusts it, and as you can see, still produces a smaller, yet perfectly straight image. So that is something which is really good. If I pop it back into the middle, you can see that it will take a couple of seconds and again, it will then position it perfectly straight. So again, great feature, especially if you're in a room where you're gonna be using this off on an angle. Now, before I do the comparison and show you some of the differences in the BenQ GS50, this has also got a lot of different settings within the software setup. Now, there's obviously the normal modes, which is like picture, where you can have standard, movie, and you can also then go into advanced settings. But this has got extra things that you wouldn't necessarily expect, like MEMC, which is Motion Enhancement Motion Control, where extra frames are put in to create smoother images. So some of these things are not necessarily normal in a project of this size and also this price point. You can zoom the picture so that hopefully you can get the perfect size for your screen or the wall that you're projecting to and you don't have to have that auto keystone, you can go manual if you want and there's also a calibration mode as well. As well as great picture controls, you've also got audio settings as well and you've got the expert settings within that section so you can go in and make changes around that too. Now you may well be comparing this with the BenQ GS50, which again is a small portable projector with a battery built in. Now one of the main differences for me is that I only believe that one of them is truly portable. If I'm being truly honest, I would say that the BenQ GS50 delivers a slightly, and I mean very slightly, better picture. It's got more ports on it as well, so it's got more connectivity. But in terms of the actual picture, there's not much in it, as you can see from these. The BenQ is a bit brighter. But if this is going to be a portable projector, then it comes down to size and how portable it is. And when you look at the measurements of this projector compared to the BenQ, then, well, it's about the same height. Its diameter is far less, but the big, big difference is the weight. This thing you can throw in your pocket, as I demonstrated at the start of this video, you can pop it in a rucksack, you can take it on holiday in a suitcase, you won't be doing that with the BenQ GS50. So really, they are two different machines for two different purposes, but the portable one, without a doubt, is the Nebula. Another big difference between these two projectors are the light sources. With the BenQ, it's an LED light source, whereas with the Nebula, it's that laser. And that probably makes up some of the difference in the brightness, although on paper, the BenQ is brighter. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think that the BenQ is a great projector, but I think it comes down to usage. With the BenQ, if it was mainly indoors, and I only ever occasionally used it outdoors in my garden, well, then I'd probably go for that one. But if you're looking at traveling any type of distance, then the Nebula, is the one to take because it's lighter, it's far more portable, it's got all of the smart functions like keystone correction and autofocus and it's just ready to go almost immediately. So guys, that's my thoughts on this Nebula projector. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you on the next.